Again, Nick, what do we know at this stage? The impression we're getting is that neither of the two big blocks, the center left or the center right block, has won outright. The big news tonight is really a breakthrough of a completely new party led by a former Prime Minister, Lars Locker Rasmussen. It's called the Moderates Party. He's in a position to be kingmaker between those two blocks. Now, the election was called early, seven months early, by the Prime Minister, Metra Friedrichsen, because one of her coalition partners was unhappy about how she dealt with the cull of minks, the animals that make coats uh, in Denmark. 15 million were killed during the COVID pandemic because of a fear that the COVID vaccine could, uh, virus could get into their systems and somehow make it impossible to vaccinate people. Turned out it was illegal to kill them all. So the coalition partner over the summer said new elections were called. The prime minister, however, pointed out that, well, things had changed. There was an international crisis, war in Ukraine, energy prices were up, and that if parliament wanted an election, well, she wasn't necessarily in favor. In any case, the election went through. The Social Democrats of Metro Friedrichsen dropped down in the polls, and there is no clear front runner. We do have, however, as I've said, a kingmaker of sorts. And just tell us, uh, Nick, what were the uh, issues that voters had at the forefront of their minds as they cast their ballots? I'd like to tell you about one thing that was not for once in a long time, that's immigration. Uh, and that's because the Social Democrats, you know, theoretically center-left, have adopted a lot of the hardline policies of the Danish People's Party. For instance, if asylum seekers come here, they get their valuables taken away to finance their stay. Metro Friedrichs and the Prime Minister has been negotiating with Rwanda to basically lodge asylum seekers while their claims are processed. It's not in the, in, in rea hasn't come into reality yet, but that's the direction they're heading. One of the most hardline policies on immigration in Europe. So what's left is basically people's concern about health care, about the environment, and about security and defense. And that bar, if you look at the graphs, is at its highest level in 30 years. And that is, of course, because of the war in Ukraine. Russia is not too far away. That pipeline, that uh, Nord Stream 2 pipeline that linked Russia to Germany was blown up not far off a Danish island uh, on, in Danish territorial waters, really focusing the minds of Danes on the security situation and sort of getting them out of their, um, well, if you will, their parochial or local concerns. Uh, it should be said, you know, that Denmark is often rated as the happiest country in the world, but there's a real feeling of tension, I think, and uncertainty about the international climate. And a lot of that, I think, has motivated voters, certainly with the ones that I spoke to uh, who were casting their ballots in Copenhagen today. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for that update. From Copenhagen, Nick Spicer, thank you very much indeed.